Let's continue exploring the credit and risk underwriting use case. In recent years, lending institutions and insurance companies have deployed AI applications to model risk, streamline processing, and reduce the time it takes to close a loan. If you think this sounds like RPA, you're right. End to end, in any digitized part of the loan process, there's a candidate for automation. But in this lesson, we're going to focus on applications for intelligent underwriting. These apps manage probabilistic decision making and help institutions answer questions like, should this borrower get a loan? What size payment can this borrower afford? And what is the likelihood this borrower will default? These fundamental questions are not new to lenders, although advances in tech are changing how we approach credit decisioning. As a result, the lending landscape is also changing. New players are entering the market, launching consumer lending and business financing ventures. First, the payment companies moved in, fintech startups followed, and finally, bigger players emerged. In 2013, PayPal began lending, and 2015, Square did the same. By early 2018, Forbes could name nine startups alone responsible for originating $20 billion in loans. And that doesn't account for the likes of Lending Club, Marcus by Goldman Sachs, or Amazon's recent foray into small business financing. Significant contributors to the changing landscape include machine learning and alternative data. Credit reporting has a history centuries old, but it wasn't until the early 21st century that credit bureaus like Equifax started automating risk decision systems. Even then, credit scoring was commonly done using techniques like logistic regression. Pushback on machine learning has been in part due to widespread fear of unfair lending practices. Self-described data skeptics like Kathy O'Neill warn of issues with transparency and discrimination by proxy data. Executives at financial service firms have gone on record with similar concerns about opaque models and regulatory compliance. Startups, on the other hand, are adapting. Zest Finance launched as an alternative data lender in 2009. Now, they're selling credit and risk modeling solutions to other lenders. Zest differentiates their machine learning by offering radical explainability and automated compliance. The appetite for alternative data appears to be insatiable. Upstart, an alternative data startup, is using bank partnerships to grow its consumer lending business at the same time using the added volume to help train its machine learning models. To improve their models, Upstart is continuously adding new data points and claims to have a three-year backlog. Credit scoring services have also been incorporating non-credit payments and other behavioral attributes. Lendo, another alternative data startup, sells software that collects social media, browsing, geolocation, and other mobile data to produce a credit score. Lenders can use the assessments to enhance their consumer credit scorecards. With alternative data, lenders can also expand into segments of the population that do not have a credit history and markets where credit bureaus do not operate. You might hear these prospects referred to as the unbanked or underserved. For years now, fintechs in China, like Alibaba, have been tackling this problem by collecting and using payment data for credit decisioning. This practice is becoming mainstream in the US as well. A recent research working paper published by the FDIC indicates that data collected from a consumer's digital footprint is a viable alternative to credit history. Looking back, PayPal might be considered an alternative data pioneer. Their small business financing venture illustrates how financial services companies are capitalizing on customer data. As new data are collected, new risk models are born. Auto insurers are using telematics data collected from apps to price plans. Amazon has been lending to select businesses in its marketplace. And with 4.8 trillion of consumer debt in the US alone, and billions of consumers worldwide without a credit history, the potential for alternative data is massive. Also, with the ever-expanding digital footprint, what's happening in finance is part of an ongoing trend in digital at large.